<coughs> These days, if you aren't feeling too well, it's easy, right? You can just go to a doctor. And doctors are accessible to everyone. Male, female, baby, kid, adult, elderly, werewolf. No discrimination involved. But back in the day, in ancient China, seeing a doctor for men was easy. But not so easy for a female. As many doctors back then were male. And many male doctors did not want to treat female patients. Especially female patients with illnesses that involved their private parts. So, it was important then that there would be female doctors or physicians that were available to treat female patients. Well, the next two episodes of this podcast will be focused on two famous female East Asian doctors, or physicians shall I say, that lived and practiced their craft during similar periods of time in history. Who were they? Let's find out, shall we? G'day everyone, welcome to another episode of the Bamboo History Podcast. I'm your host Stephen, and before we jump into this episode, big shout out to everyone who's been tuning in to my episodes. Thanks heaps for your support. If any of you have any particular topics relating to East Asian history that you would like me to cover, please let me know. You can either contact me by sending me a DM on my Instagram, at Bamboo History Podcast, and please follow it. Or you can email me. I'll leave my contact details in the description box below. Okay, now let's dive into the episode of this famous female doctor. I bet some of you are sick (coughs) of this cliffhanger, (laughs) haha. Get it? (laughs) Well, the two famous physicians I will cover in this two-part series will be, firstly, the famous Tan Yunxian, from the Ming Dynasty, and Changgum from the Joseon Dynasty, more famously known as Daejanggum. For all those K-drama fans, you know what I'm talking about. But to all those Daejanggum fans out there, you'll have to wait for part 2, because today's part 1 episode will feature the Chinese Ming Dynasty physician Tan Yunxian. Okay, Without further ado, let's get straight into it. These days, many diaspora kids from Asian backgrounds, you know, that grew up outside of Asia, will probably have a laugh at this stereotype. The stereotype that their parents want them to grow up to become doctors. Well, back in ancient China, for females, being a physician wasn't a career path that parents actively encouraged. In fact, it was discouraged for girls to grow up wanting to practice medicine. This was because China back then was a patriarchal society, and women were expected to marry into a good family, pop out some kids, preferably sons, and take care of the domestic duties within the home. This kind of mentality became even a barrier for the great Tan Yunxian as well, who we're going to talk about today. Tan Yunxian was born in the year 1461 in the Ming Dynasty of China. Her name is spelt T-A-N-Y-U-N-X-I-A-N. Tan Yunxian was born into a well-off and well-known family. Her paternal great-grandfather was an official who married into the famous Huang family, who were well-renowned physicians. Her paternal grandfather, Tan Fu, and her paternal grandmother, surnamed Ru, named Ru Shi, Ru spelt R-U, were also both famous physicians, with Grandma Ru coming from a medical family as well, although she may have also obtained some medical knowledge from her in-laws, who would have passed down their medical knowledge to their daughter-in-law, who would have kept the knowledge within the family, as opposed to, say, their own daughter, who would have married off into another family. 
Han Yunqian's father, however, did not go into the world of medicine, and instead became a local magistrate. So, the fact that Tan Yunxian grew up in a family of medical practitioners most likely influenced her decision to become a physician. The fact that her father had a position of power may have also fueled her ambitious side as well, giving her the drive to become a physician despite objections from her parents. This is evident, because in her early life, her father made her recite poems such as the classic of female filial piety, or Nu Xiao Jing, which were texts that told girls what they were supposed to do. You know, all that traditional stuff that girls needed to do back then, like take care of the family, stay at home and be obedient to their husbands. Tan Yunxian's grandparents, however, saw that their granddaughter had an interest in medicine and was also intelligent. So, Tan Yunxian learnt a lot of her medical knowledge and skills from both of them during her early years. Her grandpa would give her medical texts to read, while her grandma would explain concepts within these texts to her, and also taught her practically. For example, whenever Tan Yunxian or her kids got sick, her grandma would make her write their prescriptions to cure her and their illnesses. Tan Yunxian's grandma thus had a huge influence on her later medical career, and when her grandma passed away, she was so sad that she felt really sick herself, to the point that she couldn't do anything, and gave up on becoming a physician. Then, one night, Tan Yunxian had a dream. In her dream, her grandma appeared in front of her. Tan Yunxian was shocked. OMG, Nan, you're alive. No, no, child, I'm dead, silly. You're in a dream right now. Oh, yeah. You look really sick, my young child. Yeah, it's because you left me. What will I ever do without you? I'm sorry I left you, dear. But even though I've moved on, a part of me will always live inside you. Now, remember those medical books and notes that I left you? Yeah, I still have them. Oh, okay. Well, look inside those notes, and you will find something that will make you feel better. Tan Yunxian's grandma told her about a prescription that she had left her before she died. And when Tan Yunxian woke up, she found the prescription as directed by her grandma in the dream, used it, and miraculously recovered from her illness. Knowing that her grandma's spirit lived on with her, she found new resolve to become the best physician she could be. In 2016, a TV show was made in China about Tan Yunxian called The Imperial Doctress. The show focuses on Tan Yunxian's medical feats and her rise to become the most famous doctor in China, to the point where she began treating the imperial family. But the show is also spicy for its love triangle that is formed between Tan Yunxian and two Chinese princes. In reality though, Tan Yunxian was an accomplished physician, but she was never that famous. In fact, the real Tan Yunxian never worked in the palace at all, and was never part of a love triangle between two princes. Tan Yunxian's patients were far from the royal family that was depicted in the Imperial Doctress TV show. Rather, her patients came from all walks of life, from both the upper and lower class. Most importantly, many of her patients were people that male physicians refused to treat, which were, surprise surprise, women. There are records in her book, Nu Yi Zha Yan, known in English as Sayings of a Female Doctor, which indicate her treatment of a bricklayer's wife and a boatman's wife. Many of the women she treated had chronic illnesses, for example, menstrual bleeding, repeated miscarriage, barrenness, 
and prolonged postpartum depletion. Her method of diagnosis was different to that of other physicians. In China back in the day, physicians would take the pulse of the patient first, known as ba mai or qie mai. However, rather than taking the pulse, Tan Yunxian would have a conversation with the patients first, wrote down what her patients told her about the symptoms, and then made a diagnosis after. This is similar to how general practitioners would operate these days. Tan Yunxian would also use herbal treatments as well as tonics and pastes. But her signature method of treatment was moxibustion or jiu in Chinese. For those of you who don't know, moxibustion is the process of burning dried mugwort, a type of flowering plant known also as artemisia, onto the skin. The pain caused from the heat from the burning would ease swelling, ease aches and soreness, and induce a smoother flow of blood, unclogging parts of circulation in the body. There are people that doubt this treatment of moxibustion, as it doesn't have scientific backing. However, it worked for Tan Yunxian, and as long as the patients were treated, that's the most important thing, right? There were probably many other female doctors and physicians out there during ancient China, but none as famous as Tan Yunxian. She wouldn't have been this famous if it weren't for the publishing of a medical text, the Nu Yi Zha Yan, Sayings of a Female Doctor which sets out her methods of treatment through 31 medical cases, real examples of how she treated patients. Tan didn't even want to publish this book in the first place. It was actually her son that insisted that the book be published, and it was first published in the year 1511. However, the Nu Yi Zha Yan, when it was first published, wasn't a famous text at the time, and it was soon lost. And it was only resurfaced when Tan Yunxian's grand nephew found a copy of it. He was so surprised that it even existed, and he republished this book using woodblock printing in the year 1585. Tan Yunxian herself lived a long life and died at the age of 93, which is very long back in those days. She died in the year 1554. Unlike the TV show The Imperial Doctress, which highly dramatizes Tan Yunxian's life and incorporates many fictional elements, in reality, her life, as I've just told you, may be a letdown for many of us. But I think the story of the real Tan Yunxian is still an important one to tell. Because, one, She was one of the rare female physicians in ancient China, amongst the many, many male physicians. Two, despite her struggles early on in life when her parents objected her to becoming a physician, she overcame those challenges through the help of her grandparents and became a successful physician. Three, despite her upper-class upbringing, she didn't discriminate and treated people from all walks of life regardless of their gender, age and social class. And four, even though her book, Nu Yi Zha Yan, didn't contain any groundbreaking or innovative medical knowledge or techniques, it still gives us great insight into the practice of medicine at the time, especially the practice of medicine by a female physician on female patients, which makes her book very unique in ancient Chinese history. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of the story of Tan Yunxian, the most famous female doctor in ancient China. I hope you all learnt something new today. Remember, before you all tune off, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast, follow my Instagram, contact me if you have any questions or topic suggestions, and visit my website. I'll leave all those details in the description box below. That brings an end to part one of the two-part series on ancient East Asian female doctors. Stay tuned for next week's part two episode when we talk about the famous Korean doctor, Changum. So, thank you everyone for listening. 
Enjoy the rest of your day or evening, and I'll see you all next time on the Bamboo History Podcast. Bye for now. Bye for now.